<laughs> game face, Hollywood face. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so continuing to chain our snap single together with multiple finishes. Let's say we get on our leg and our partner's blocking our inside hand. He's not allowing us to thigh pry off and finish, okay? He's got good balance. He's not going down when we try to run the pipe. What we're gonna do here is change levels and come up, okay? So I've tried to run the pipe. He's not going down. He's got my hand blocked. So now I have to charge in with my shoulder so I can clear his inside leg out from between mine. If it's in between my leg, I'm not gonna be able to lift it up and level change up, okay? So I'm gonna push in, leg comes out and I'm gonna lift up. All right, now some of our finishes are very controlled and some of our finishes are just meant to get to our opponent to the ground any way possible. Slam finishes in particular, they have great utility in terms of if you wanna prove a point, right? Maybe they've been hand fighting a little hard. Maybe you need to take a little bit of the wind out of them or if you just, this is just the finish that you like to do, okay? So our very first finish from here, we don't have to change off or do anything else. Upon our lift, okay? So upon our lift, we're gonna sweep and trip with our inside leg. So I, I charge in, lift, and trip with our inside leg, okay? If you like to slam, you can, but you can hold onto the knee and take him to the ground and cover him, right? So what do I mean by that? So as I uppercut, at the top of my uppercut, when I go to trip, right, you wanna sweep his leg completely out from underneath you. And Joe is 6'4", he tells me anyway, I'm pretty sure he's like 6'5", and I'm six foot tall, so it's a pretty significant height advantage. If I lift hard, with my underhook, regardless of the height advantage, right? His hips are only gonna be so high. Whenever the knee starts going over the hips, the higher it goes over the hips, the, the less balanced your partner's gonna feel, okay? So as you uppercut, at the top of your uppercut, the very, very, very top, right? That's when you wanna step in and sweep. And you might wanna turn your foot out. Rustlers, honestly, we keep our foot straight and we just sweep straight across. But if you're afraid of hitting bone to bone, hitting your ankle bone, on his heel or anything, go ahead and turn your foot in. You can go ahead and just sweep that foot, okay? So I step in, I uppercut sweep, and you can follow him straight down to the ground and cover. Now, what I wanna work on here is more controlled finishes. These are honestly the finishes that you should be favoring the most when you first start out with your single leg game, okay? Running the pipe and thigh prime, they're all great finishes. Running the pipe in particular it's gonna take a little time to develop that shoulder pressure, all the intricacies of, of getting your grip and your attachment settled appropriately. But that finish leads into most of our other finishes. That's why I introduced it first. It's important that we develop that quickly. But when you're very first starting out, the uppercut, this is gonna be the, the finish that you wanna focus on the most, all right? So what you probably have seen a lot of, and this is what we teach a lot of in wrestling too, traditional American wrestling, is when we come up, sliding out to the ankle from here, okay? Right after this segment, we're gonna go right into defense. And I can tell you right now, especially with no shoes on, he could turn and slip out of that no problem, okay? It's very, very easy. If he doesn't turn his knee down, his foot's just gonna stay jammed. But if he turns his knee down, the foot slips out of that very easily, especially if you're only a couple minutes in and you're a little slippery, it's gonna slip right out. That's why I much prefer having you go to the knee, okay? Going to here is a much better wedge, much better attachment. His knee is much higher and it's higher it's harder for him to kick out. He still can if he's defensively savvy, right? I'll show you exactly how to get out of this. But again, wrestling is so underdeveloped right now in BJJ that most people are gonna have no idea how to get out of this, all right? So, and then I want my inside hand to be all the way up towards my chest, right? Think about guillotine. So I'm gonna uppercut here and then I can step, replace, have my hand high and that's my, my, uh, my bone structure is carrying it, not so much my muscles. So if I start to get low, then, then it's very much like a bicep curl. You start to get um, tired very quickly. Keep it high and you can hold it for a very long time. Partner is almost always gonna create a tie. He's gonna collar tie here. It doesn't feel good having one leg up in the air. So he's gonna create an attachment to try and keep his balance, okay? We can go two ways with this. We can go back or we can go forward, all right? So let's just go over how to go back, okay? So how to take him back. I like. I would always prefer getting a collar tie, especially if your opponent's pulling you in nice and tight. If they're pulling you in nice and tight, all you have to do is reach up, grab a collar tie. I'm gonna step, trip, and pull. Again, Joe's pretty tall, right? So if his collar tie is long, right, it's gonna be hard for me to get to that collar tie on him. He's got such a length advantage. All I have to do is shorten my grip down to the elbow. Regardless of how tall he is, I don't care if he's seven foot tall, this elbow is always gonna be within range, okay? All you have to do is hook on the elbow, 
and there's your attachment, and you can do the same thing, trip, and cover. Now, this is one of my favorite finishes, because as soon as you get to the leg, if you can get, this is the one of the great utilities of the snatch single is we don't have to go super low. If we, and if we can get to the leg, we can get to the back, all right? So let's say he's posted again. Oh, yep, you can be collar tied, you can be posted, right? This is great. If he's posting away, all I'm gonna do is catch. C-clamp grip, thumb inside, just above the elbow, right? I don't wanna go here or at the elbow, just above the elbow. And I'm gonna push and clear this as I trip and curl at his knee, okay? So I'm gonna step here, and what's important is that I curl this leg as I push and clear this off, okay? So here, hands go to the ground, and we can step, climb, finish. It is a, uh, it's a super powerful finish, and you have to use your hands here, right? My, my partner has to use his hands to brace, or he's just gonna eat the mat, all right? He's just gonna go face first straight into the mat. So I occupy his hands, right? And then that allows me to take the back, all right? So one thing you do wanna watch out for from here is that guys can get a sneaky little leg entry. If you do not, if you do not clear this all the way, guys can start rolling into leg entries from here, okay? So when you trip, make sure you curl your heel back and lower your shoulder. So if I push and curl my heel back and lower my shoulder, when we go to land, I'll be out of danger. Here, uppercut, the outside, he's grabbing a collar tie. I'm gonna step, hook, post, and I'm going low with it. And now I want you to start toggling them together, okay? Let's say your, your, partner, has, your partner has really good balance, right? You may have to pull him and to push him, okay? So back to our off-balancing theme that we've been seeing throughout the instructional. I may have to pull him back, and let's say you're going for the trip, and you're not getting, he's stepping over that leg. You just you keep trying to pull it, then you have to change directions, go forward, climb, shoulder in a threefold, driving down to the mat. That was good. That's it. Yeah, that was good. Real quick, before you go back into the scrolling vortex, we're trying to bring the gift of wrestling to the entire world. And I want to ask you to be a part of this journey by sharing this video. Of course, like, subscribe. But most importantly, and this is something we should be doing anyway, we just tend to forget in the moment, is share the content with your training partners, friends, your gym's Facebook group. And you know what? By golly, feel good about yourself for sharing it. You've just taken an overt action towards growing wrestling itself. Round of applause for you, good sir. Or Sirette. Finally, a huge thank you to our Patreon subscribers. You guys make what we do here at Russell U possible. And hey, thanks for watching, guys.